Hello everyone, happy Thursday. Hey there, Candy Rattray, on time. I think you popped up before it said I was even live. How funny, thank you for joining me. Yay, this is fun. I'm gonna wait just a couple of moments and see if anybody else is joining me. I know I had a couple of people respond. I put a post out that I was gonna be live in 30 minutes. So I had a couple people that were saying they were gonna be here. So we'll just give them a few moments just to see if they're gonna be able to make it. Um, it's always a lot more fun when you have people watching you than not, but it's okay either way. I still enjoy doing these for you guys. So whether you're, you catch me live or you watch the replay, um, I really enjoy doing these um, video tutorials. Oh, maybe Diane will finally catch me live. <laughs> That would be awesome. I think I'll go ahead and just talk about a couple of things. Um, I've got a couple of deadlines for classes that are coming up and I just want to make sure that you're aware. I'm sorry about that glare. It's because the uh, it's the picture frame. Um, the glass is really glitter. Well, I hope you can still see it if I do it like this. This is my, um, what I'm calling my fall home decor piece. Um, sometimes people will call them um, samplers. Um, it's just a, a pretty piece to display in your home. Um, and this is, um, where are my notes? I can quit saying um. Let's see, this class is next Thursday. Yes, I'm sorry. Next Thursday, the 27th at six o'clock. And due to a few back order issues, products that are on back order, um, I've had to kind of change this up a little bit because I was going to use the chicken wire elements and they're now on back order. So the project has changed just slightly, but I've also dropped the price because you're not getting as much product. Um, I will be able to show you how I implemented the, um, the chicken wire so that if you have some or um, you were able to get some when they come back in stock. Uh, you can add it if you want. Um, but I think it looks beautiful without them too. So this is um, an eight by eight shadow box frame. And the class includes the frame and all of the materials um, to make this project. And it also includes a bolt of the new braided linen trim. This is, I believe it's 10 yards, let's see. They've changed around the packaging, so I don't remember where the description is. Yes, I had it right the first time. 10 yards, so you'll get this and you'll use it um, on, your, on your project. And then you're also gonna get um, some of the galvanized clips. So all of that is included in the, in the class for $30. And if you are interested in a to-go option, um, or the live option. Either way, you just email me, darlenestampinspot at gmail.com, and I will um, give you the information for to go if that's what you're wanting. Um, and I can also give you the link to register for the live class. Again, that's next Thursday, and that deadline is this coming Sunday, the 23rd. You have to let me know by 10 o'clock um, Sunday night uh, if you would like to attend the live class. And that's also the deadline for the to go option, too. So, Okay, so there's that one. And then, let's see, so that's next Thursday. And then Friday, the 28th, we're having Stampin' Bingo. Yay! We had so much fun last month um, when I hosted that. And I had a lot of great feedback. And we had a fun turnout. And I just thought, you know what? Well, it's the end of the Stampin' Up! Um, year which doesn't mean anything to you guys. There's no catalogs retiring or anything like that. It's just for demonstrators. Um, our Stampin' Up! fiscal year ends on September 30th, and so I thought, well, we'll just have one more event um, before that ends. So that cost is $30, and like I said, it's Friday the 28th 
Um, we'll be playing five to six rounds of bingo, have three um, make and takes. We're gonna do a Halloween, a Thanksgiving or thankful type, and then a Christmas project. And one of those will be 3D, I haven't, I haven't decided yet. Um, you'll get a, a fun little swag bag with some product that you'll use that night, and then you'll also have plenty to take home and, and make some more creations. Um, so that is Friday the 28th. The deadline for that is Sunday as well, the 23rd by 10 o'clock. If you want to attend my live bingo on Friday the 28th, you need to let me know by September 23rd. And you just email me, darlingstampinspot at gmail.com, and I will send you the link to register. Uh, the other, let me see, this is right here behind me, I think, I think, I think, yes, okay. So last week I shared that I was doing this class next Saturday, the 29th. Yeah, I have back-to-back -back classes scheduled next week for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, unfortunately, this kit has now gone on back order. And so the, the class is not going to happen. So I have a couple of different um, options of how I'm dealing with this. Number one is this class is being postponed. And the, um, I believe they said that the expected arrival date into the warehouse is mid-October. So once these get back into the warehouse and they're orderable again, I will create the event again and we'll do it late, the last part of October, maybe even the first part of November. It's still plenty of time to get your Christmas cards out right before or right after Thanksgiving, like I promised you that you could actually get that done. Um, we're just gonna have to do it a little later. So instead, I'm still having a class that day and what we're gonna do is the other kit one of the other kits that's in the holiday catalog is the uh, sincerely santa project kit and this is a gift tag kit so there's five different tags and you make one two three four one two three four five there's 30 tags and there's one, two, five different ones so you're gonna make six of each it comes with step-by-step -step, um instructions and then it's also got full color photos. Um, this is the little flyer that comes in in the kit. So it's got numbers that correspond with the directions over on the other side. And um, it, they're super easy to put together and it's so much fun and they're just adorable. And I know that I love every year when they come out with a tag, um, a tag kit, I always get it. We do it. Um, after Thanksgiving, after you know the, the guys are watching football and dad's napping and, and the girls and I, we just kinda um, get together and, and we, make, we make tags. And they, they're just so fun to put, on, um, to put on your Christmas gifts. I just love doing it. So um, this is actually what the tin looks like. This is what the project kit comes in. And I haven't even opened mine yet because I was planning on doing that other card kit. So I don't have any of these assembled for you. I apologize about that. Um, but I can post some pictures that Stampin' Up! has um, has posted with these already. So, like I said, they're, look at these pretty snowflakes. These foil snowflakes. And then these really, these are doilies. I don't know if they're foiled or not. Like I said, I just, I hadn't opened it because I was working on that um, card kit first. So, and then here's the fun part. There's jingle bells for one of the tags. How fun is that? Okay. So... There's all your pieces and parts. It comes in this beautiful tin. So even if you wanted to make the cards and then gift it to somebody, this would be an awesome present. You just stick it back in the tin and, and, just, and it's ready to gift. Um, or keep the tin for yourself like I'm going to do because I love stamping up tins. I collect them. I don't want to get rid of them. Um, but I will share what's inside and I'll share the tags with my mom and, and my sister and my niece at Thanksgiving. So this is the same deal. It's the class is Saturday, September 29th. It's $30, and that's all of the supplies. Everybody's gonna get their own kit, and then I'm gonna bring the stamp set and the ink and anything additional that um, I would think will help um, you be able to finish the kit. So again, the, re the deadline is on Sunday. So big deadline coming up this Sunday, the 23rd. There's my fall home decor class on Thursday. Stampin' Bingo is on Friday and the tag kit is on Saturday. All three of those events, the deadline to register is this Sunday, September 23rd. Okay, now that I've gotten all of that out of the way, <laughs> let's get to our prize, prizes. Um, last week, my winner from the week before was um, someone that was new to my lives, Linda Kimmel. Um, if you'll reach out to me, Linda, and uh, give me your address, I will mail you your 
Baker's Twine, okay? And um, yeah, so I just need to get your mailing address, okay? And then I told you I was giving away this pack of Baker's, uh, Basic Black Baker's Twine. <laughs> that was a mouthful. And the winner is my buddy, Terry Lynn. So Terry Lynn, you should be looking for some happy mail um, next week or so. Um, it'll probably go out tomorrow or, or Saturday. So anyway, definitely um, be waiting, looking out the window. <laughs> like you said that you do. You get excited when the mailman comes. Okay, so this week's prize is this pack of Pattern Party Decorative Masks. These are really fun. If you have our embossing paste, these are what these are intended for, but you can also use them just as stencils with um, sponge daubers or... Um, um, I, I guess you could use regular sponges too. Anyway, there's four different designs. Here's the brick wall, that pretty medallion, like our Eastern medallion set. There's some clouds, and then this fun diamond pattern. So that's the prize for this week. And all you have to do is comment and share my video, and you will be put into the drawing. And after the live is over, I put everybody's name into random.org, and it generates the winner for me. Okay, so. Let's get down to, well, actually, I was going to say, let's get stamping, but today's project, there's no stamping, <laughs> so I hope you don't mind. We are making another uh, Halloween treat box, and I hope you guys aren't tired of seeing Halloween yet. We're actually using the, um, the takeout framelits, thinlets. I don't know, I didn't write that on there. Um, we're not using the stamp set, but this is the stamp set that coordinates with these treats. This is a red rubber uh, clear mount stamp set. And if you purchase these together using the bundle code, you save 10%. Like I said, we're just using the framelits today. This is the framelit for the box, and you need to cut out two of them, which is the case with most of our um, boxes like this with dies. So I've already done that for us. And I did that in Granny Apple Green. So every year I make a different Frankie Halloween treat, and this is my Frankie for the year. So I hope you guys like it. It's kind of in my head still. I've, I've put it together almost all the way. Um, I've got a couple of, of embellishments that um, I'm hoping you guys will give me your opinion on where I'm kind of not quite sure what I want to do at the very end to finish part of his um, the finish part of his face. So that'll be fun. Y'all get to weigh in and um, let me know what you think. Okay. So the die created all of these score lines, and all I'm doing is folding on them and giving them a good crease with my bone folder. It's very important when you're making 3D items that you have good straight creases. And these are our, there's four of these. These are the glue tabs. This reminds me of our old, uh, actually two dies. So the the Kirby keepsake. Do y'all remember that die? I loved that one. It was that little round, um, squatty little box. And then the um, the popcorn thinlet. So it's kind of like the popcorn thinlet and the Kirby keepsake had a baby and it became the takeout treat box. <laughs> In a way, I love it. I think it's super cute. Okay, so first thing I want to do is sponge. I want to sponge around the edges and give it some some depth and a little character to our Frankie and before too long you're gonna to start to see it he's gonna to start to come to life so I'm just very quickly this is one of our sponge daubers it just goes right on the end of your finger dip it into your ink pad and I'm just brushing it along that fold line and I want to do it on all of the the folds. You don't have to do any other the other edges. You just want to do it on your folds. And I'm going to do that really quickly. Um, did I get that? I missed this one. I'm going to do this really quickly on both pieces. This is a really quick and simple project. So if you wanted to do this for your trick-or-treaters or your special trick-or-treaters or, -treaters or um, teacher gifts, little things to just pass out during the month of October for random act of kindness. They, uh, they come together really simply and they're not too big so they don't hold a whole bunch of candy, which is good. That's usually the hard, the most expensive part is the candy that you put in there. Hey, Janan, I'm glad you're here. It does, it does look like a coffin. Look, this is so funny. Okay, 
when I put things together, yeah, I'm always looking for other. Okay, so this is how it goes together with these two little um, openings at the top, like the sides get tucked in like that, and then this goes together and hooks like that, right? But if you do it the opposite way, and you tuck in or cut off those little tabs, then you have, ah, I don't know. It kind of looks like a coffin treat, right? That's what I was totally thinking. So um, I'm sure that um, I'm not the first one to think of this, but uh, maybe you are, Jeanette. A <laughs> great idea. Um, so I can't see the rest of your comment. Uh, Facebook doesn't, it says see more, and, and I'm not able to click on that So at the moment, but I'll look at the rest of it later. Um, I'll, I'm going to have to figure something else out with this and see if we can't come up with um, some sort of a coffin treat. Okay, so that's all of the sponging that we needed to do. And I'm going to go ahead and assemble my little face before we put him together. So these are exactly the same. The only thing that you want to pay attention to is that this is the front and the back of your box. So the piece that's underneath where the little um, slit is, this is where you wanna be doing your face, okay? These are the sides. So we're just gonna do it on one. And I'm gonna bring in, we're gonna be doing some punch art. So I've got the cookie cutter builder punch and I've got a half inch circle punch. And let me see, I've got scraps. I've got my silicone sheet mat over here because these things will go flying off my desk and if I don't stick them on this mat, I'll lose them and I'll have to cut them again. <laughs> yeah, ask me how I know that. Okay, I'm just glad I remembered about the mat. So, okay, let me, here, let's punch first. Okay, so we're gonna do the half inch circle punch. This is granny apple green. We're gonna punch two of those. Okay, and you know what? I think that I wanna go ahead and sponge these real quick. I don't think I need to add any more ink because they're gonna go down on that granny apple green and I think maybe if I sponge them, they'll, they'll stand out a little bit more. Just see, let me just do this real quick. There's enough ink on this um, dauber still that I didn't have to dip it back in. Okay, there we go. I think that's gonna look better. Okay, now in the cookie cutter punch, um, these two larger circles here, we're gonna do with Whisper White and then these two smaller ones over here we'll do in the basic black, okay? So, and I've, I've just got some scrap, Whisper White. We're gonna cut out both of those, punch those out. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring in my basic black on the other side. And again, we're just getting the, those two, and you're gonna end up with a bow tie, isn't that cute? I was saving those for some reason. I'm not sure why. I just hated wasting them. I'll figure something out to do with them for Christmas, maybe. Okay, those scraps are gonna bother me, so I'd get them out of the way. Okay, so there's the components for um, for his eyes. Okay, so the other thing that um, the other element is we needed something for his hair. So I've got, um, I'll show you what I used. I used the Playful Pennants um, Framelits and I used this one right here. And this is in the annual catalog. And the reason why I used this instead of the other one that I'm gonna show you, thank you Jeanette for sharing, I really appreciate that. Um, the reason I went with this one is because when you cut it out, you actually get two separate pieces and you can use them, you can use them both. So you're cutting out two of the, you know, his hairline for, uh, with just one pass so um, plus if you cut the paper long enough you'll actually get two so then you would really be getting four now the other one that is just as cute and will also work is I've got the window box thinlets and I used this one um, to punch him out and then uh, to punch him out to cut him out and I just trimmed it um, you know the the height that I wanted it here so um, his little hair was, you know, this little um, design here, and it was cute. I'll show you a really quick, I don't wanna show you the whole thing, but that's what that one looks like with the, the window box framelit. And then you're gonna see this one is what this one looks like, okay? 
I think I'm going to go ahead and put it, this on his hair on first because then that way I will know where to place his eyes. And so I'm going to use some of our liquid glue. Liquid glue and I are friends. Love it. Uh, let's see. Can go to about right there. Okay. And I'm just going to you just the secret to this is to not press real not to squeeze the bottle real hard. And you just, you just need a little bit. It's a really strong glue. You don't need a whole lot. If you're getting a, a lot of glue that's coming out, you're just squeezing the bottle too hard. And um, if you're getting where it seeps out from underneath your cardstock, you're just using too much. So just try a lighter hand and, um, and not use too much. Okay, so I'm gonna tuck in that tab and I'm gonna go right up to that score line at the top where the box goes over. Get that under there. Okay, and I'm just gonna hold that for a second. We'll cut it off in just a minute. I just wanna make sure that it's dry. Give that a good press. Okay, I'm gonna stick that punch back over that just so it can kinda of help it while we work on um, our little eyeballs here. So, have y'all seen the new uh, pick a pick a tool? I think is what it's called. Ada K would be disappointed in me. She, one of my friends, um, gave a very very nice demonstration of how to use this tool. And one, I can't remember the name of it. And two, I keep forgetting what she said. But okay, <laughs> I'm just gonna do an itty bitty dot right here on each of those eyes. And this end is the putty end, so that's sticky, so it's gonna help to pick up your, look this, watch. <laughs> it's so cool. And then it just comes, it's awesome. Sometimes um, I will grab my um, paper piercer to go like this, if it, you know, if it's being stubborn, but you don't always need it. Maybe for the smaller ones, it'll want it. Now this time I'm gonna go even smaller dot of glue just a smidge and then I want to get that whatever that was there we go that was just some extra glue I think that was on the tip and when I touched the paper with it so okay and then we're gonna pick up um, let's see that's the back so let me turn it over okay I'm gonna pick him up and just go right in the there and I am I, I'm using my my fingernail to hold on to that so I guess on these smaller pieces it really is good to have um, something to kind of help let that putty let go of the cardstock ah, look I love it of course right now it kind of looks like frog eyes right okay and that's sticky and I don't want it to be so okay so those are on all right now let's, before we glue those on, let's do some work with this. Okay, so first thing what I'm gonna do is cut off this excess. Don't cut, don't cut your tab. You're holding that back, but don't cut your tab off. Just, there we go, okay? Super cute, oh my gosh. Okay, now while these dry, I'm just gonna kinda place them where I think that I want them so that we can draw his mouth and then his little, um, the little scars, the stitch mark. And I'm gonna be using um, the uh, Stampin' Right marker in basic black. Um, just like the blends, our markers the same way have the skinny line is the pen tip and then the fatter line is the brush end, okay? And I think for the little mouth, I kinda am just going to, of course I want his eyes to be kinda funky and crisscrossed because I think he looks cuter that way. And I'm just gonna kind of make a little check mark. You can do whatever you want. You can do a scribbly line, or I'm just gonna kind of go like this. And that's my mouth, okay? Super simple. Now I'm gonna come in with the pin line, and I'm just gonna kind of do, um, like you're doing the uh, uh, Roman numerals, like you're making the number five-ish. And I think that, I don't know, I think four looks cute. And then I'm going to come up here, maybe over here, and kind of do a little bit. That one only has three. And I mean, either way, it doesn't matter, however you want to do it. And then I think I'm going to do one right here. Okay. 
And that's it. There's his little face. Isn't he cute? What do y'all think? Hello, Ada K. I'm so glad you're joining me. Okay, so now we can go ahead telling them, telling, just talking about some tips that you had given us about the pickup tool. So thank you for that. That was a great presentation that you did. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a little drop there and a little drop there. I'm telling you with this, a little goes a long way. And then you're not supposed to just pull this off. You're supposed to kind of rock it. So, cause it has that um, air pressure something. I don't know. I'm a poor student. I don't remember. <laughs> Suction. That's what. I uh, think Jeanette. I think it's just so much fun when you're doing punch art like this when it, when the face when you can start to see it really all coming together i just love it and then i'm just going to try to scoot these down just a smidge because i forgot his little eyebrows okay now i think that i'm just going to draw them on but i wanted to show you a couple different options that i had come up with okay so you guys remember the um spider web from the cauldron bubble framelits well i had cut one out I mean, I'm cutting a lot of them out. Um, but when you cut them out, you're left with all of these little bits. And because I had adhesive on the back, you know, they're sticky. So I thought, well, you know, that's too, that's way too thick and way too big, but you know, maybe you could cut it and trim it and, and make it work. And then I thought, well, that's just too much trouble. I want quick and easy, right? So the other thing that I thought of is this. If you take the bat punch, and so cut out your bats. So now you've got your three little bats for another project. And then right along that same area, just scoot the, scoot, without taking it out, just scoot the, the punch up just a smidge. You want it to be kind of thin. And punch again, and then look. <laughs> I don't know if this is silly or, or what, but look, so now you've got all these different um, I mean, you could even use that for um, his little hairline. It would be cute. You'd have to do two of them. Um, but I thought, well, maybe somehow I could turn these in to, like, you could use them for little mouths. How cute would that be? Look at this one. <laughs> but I thought maybe one of these little pieces could be um, a little eyebrow. I mean, I think that's adorable. Or you can just go ahead and dry them on, draw them on. So... You know what, I think these are cute, so I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna cut those apart and then cut them away from each other. I hadn't really planned on how I was gonna do this, so here we go. Let me grab that little tool again. Um, and I'm just gonna do, uh, hmm. you know what, I think what I'm gonna do is put the glue here on the mat if I can, I left the cap off, so it's, oh, all right, kind of spread it out there a little bit, and then use my tool, make sure I'm on the right side of, if you, if you don't know what the right and the wrong side is, it's not that big a deal, but the wrong side usually has the, you can see that the edges, the, the frayed, um, oh, look, there's that other eye that I <laughs> lost earlier, oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm picking that up. I'm gonna dip it in the glue, and then I'm just gonna place it right over there. And that could be one of his little eyebrows. See if maybe it'll go just underneath the granny apple green circle. There we go. Tuck that right in there. Okay, I think it's cute. Um, like I said, I mean, that just gives you a whole bunch of different options for whatever you want to do to, to make your little eyebrows. And we're going to put this one right here. Okay, this is making me very happy. <laughs> I love him. He's so cute. And because they're not, you know, even and symmetrical and, and you know, straight, they're funky, it's Frankenstein, you know? I think it's okay. It's perfectly fine for him to be like that. Okay, now the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take our um, Stampin' Chalk marker and I'm just going to do a little bitty dot right there in the black, kind of towards the edge. 
Okay. And there we go. And we're almost done. I know I'm coming up on my 30 minutes. Let's just put it together. That's all we have left to do. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use tear tape, tear and tape with this rather than the liquid glue. One, because it's a little faster, um, which I don't know, for speed, when I'm mass producing these for craft fair, I'm going to want um, quick. And yes, this will tear, but because of the angles of these glue tabs, I'm just going to go ahead and cut them. And then once you cut that first one, I'll show you something that helps me out when I'm mass producing. So now I already have my angled edge, right? So when you go to the next tab, line that up with the, the angled edge. Bring it down. And this is just fits the tear and tape. So you're going to want to go right up to the score line. And then I'm right here at the edge. Um, I hope you guys can see that. So the, the tab is, I'm sure, purposely created that way to fit our tear and tape because the designers at Stampin' Up! are just, they're genius. Okay, so there's two. We've got two more. Again, I'm going to line up my angled edge of the tear and tape. And then we're going to cut it off. And then one more time. Got one more tab, and then we need to do the bottom. Oops, this needs to go this way. And then, so this one goes here. Okay. Oh, thanks, Jeanette. You like the eyebrows? Yeah, that was that was totally on the fly. I hadn't really planned that I was going to do that. So um, I just, I don't know. I thought it was cute as it was kind of coming together. I just ripped my little paper there. Okay, so then remember you want to um, press over that tear and tape, get that adhesive active, active and sticking down. And then oh, you're also going to need to do one of the bottoms. So it doesn't matter if you make his face be the bottom or the top. It doesn't matter. I'm just putting it right here. And depending on what you're going to put in here, um, which is not going to be a whole lot, and I'll show you what um, I'm going to put in these at the end. I this is this might be overdoing it, but they're going to be at craft shows. People are going to be picking them up and looking at them and opening them and I just I would be so embarrassed if one of my projects ever fell apart, you know, while somebody was looking at it. Can you imagine? Okay. So first thing I'm going to do, I've got my paper piercer. Of course, you could use that new pickup tool with that spatula end. Uh, we're just going to come at it from this from the side. Rather than kind of come at the edge over here, at the end, if you just come over here from the side and kind of at an angle and just pick at it, it'll come right up. Okay? So then we're going to take this guy. And I don't know if I need to tell you this, but I will just in case. You want opposite sides matching. So here's our two coffin-looking ends are across from each other and here's our two with the slits okay that are across from each other and then your your adhesive should be face up when you're putting this together okay and this just goes right inside fits right together and before you press it down just turn it over and just make sure everything should be flush okay and then give it a good press with your bone folder make sure that is really stuck down okay and then now the same thing. So I'm going to come at it from the side. I think it's a little easier from this side than it is that side because it's so close to that edge. Oops, super sticky. Pull these off. Oh, I forgot. There's one more thing and I wanted to ask you guys what you thought. Let me put this, let me just show you how it goes together. So just start with one tab. And you're going to come in and all you're doing is lining up this straight edge with along this fold line and because we sponged it it's even easier to see it okay and then i'm going to go ahead and give that a press now i've exposed all of my adhesive at this point so i need to be careful about it not sticking to my table or um, you know another project or whatever and so you're going to do the same thing so i'm bringing up the straight edge to that fold Oh, I got tear and tape stuck to the bone folder. Okay. And then here's the third one. Come up. And you're just kind of making sure that everything is aligned. It goes together really quickly. I mean, you'll know if, if you're off. I mean, you don't want it to be in like that. 
and you don't, you know, you want it to be flush. And then there's the last one. So let me just get in there one more time, my bone folder, and really um, press down on those adhesive tabs that are down in there. And then, okay, so then this, these two sides will close, will um, fold in, and then you just kind of bring these two together, and you've got to twist them a little bit. Don't pull too hard. But you just kind of twist just a little bit until they catch like so. There we go. And then you can, you know, you can pinch that up, or you could leave it down but look at the cutest little takeout box ever right and it's the little Frankie as soon as I saw this in the holiday catalog I knew exactly what I was gonna do with this I knew I wanted to make the little Frankie and I'm working on a little pumpkin and maybe a ghost and then of course for um, for Christmas do this in red with a little black around it for his belt and the buckle oh my gosh it's gonna be so cute I'm excited I can't wait to share those with you too um, I haven't made them yet they're just they're in my head at this point but I'm just gonna kind of leave this alone now this is closed you know you don't have to do anything else with it but if you weren't doing the Frankie face you know you were doing a, a stamped image or a greeting or whatever you could tie ribbon around this you could poke a hole here with some Baker's twine and a little tag that had your greeting there's just there's so many things that you can do with this box. It's so versatile and I just love it. I hope that this carries over um, because I'm already having so much fun playing with him. Okay, now the other thing that I forgot, he needs the, his little, his, uh, his bolts, right? The screws on the side of his head. So I pulled out a couple of different options um, and I'm not sure what is gonna work. I mean, we have these brads, but I didn't know, like if I poke that through there, I don't know, then it would kind of sit out like that. I mean, cute, but then, I don't know, would it be in the way in the project? Is that too, is it too much? I don't know. I actually don't think it would be, it would go much outside that tab. I don't know if I can slide this in here now that I've got that, it glued down really well. I should have done this before, I for, totally forgot. Okay, well, maybe that's an option, maybe it's not, I don't know. Um, other stuff that I have, I'm looking for silver. So we've got these uh, metallic pearls. These are the silver. So I just wanted to kind of see what that was going to look like if I put it on the side. See, and to me, that doesn't really look like bolts. Hello, Serena. Welcome to my Facebook Live. I'm so glad that you're here. I don't, I don't really care for that either. I don't like that, which probably means I'm not going to like the rhinestones either. Let's see. I don't know, what do y'all think? Yeah, to me it just, it looks out of place and it's not what I'm wanting it to do. So maybe I'll try it with the brads before I put another one together, but the other option is, again, with those leftover pieces, the leftover bits um, from the spider web die. You can see right here, where I've just taken one and cut it in half and kind of just stuck it um, stuck it right there I could color them what color would you what color would you color them black Jeanette are you and are you talking about the rhinestones so I yeah I'm not really in love with this either I just I'm wondering if it like needs to be down inside right here um, rather than on his face I don't know Y'all leave me a comment. Tell me what you would what you would think, what you would do with it, or what you think might look cute, and I will be glad to give it a try and post some pictures of it. Okay, so I'm just I'm gonna leave it alone for right now. Um, I know that I'm over my time, but really quickly, I just want to show you uh, what I'm gonna put in these. Oh, here it is. So um, the, this is her, these are the Hershey Monster Kisses. This is what they've come out uh, with this year, and so. Let's see how many, I'm opening them for the first time, so I have no idea how many. Oh, you think it's okay without? Okay, I was wondering. Interesting, okay, cool. So let's see, I'm, you could put some paper shred down in the bottom of that, but I don't know. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I usually do eight when I make these in the our Clear Tiny Treat boxes. I think that that's a generous amount. Um, you know, for a craft fair treat. And then 
this will close up. This is it's kind of tricky the first couple of times. You just you just got to play with it. Um, but just be careful not to pull too pull and tug too hard on it. So so eight will fit in here nicely. And um, for that amount of candy, that price point for me is three dollars. Um, but then I'll also do an option. Uh, there'll be three dollars or two for five is what I'll sell them for um, at my craft show. So there it is. That is my cute little Frankie for this year. I hope you guys love him as much as I do. I think he is so stinking cute. Um, really quickly, I won't keep you, but just a couple seconds. And if you need to go, I understand. I'm, I'm over my time. Um, next, th this Sunday, there's three different deadlines by 10 o'clock Sunday night for three different events that I have going on the following next week. Thursday is my um, home decor class. Let me just bring that back in. My uh, home decor sampler. This is Thursday night, the 27th. This is the, let me see, my Stampin' Bingo is Friday night, the 28th. And then we're doing the, um, the Simply Sincerely Santa Tag Kit on the 29th, which is Saturday. So I've got events next week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, ending September strong. And um, get, just trying to give you um, a few different options to get started on your holiday crafting, whether it's your um, card making or home decor or these tags. Um, and if you go back and watch the beginning of the video, I explain why I had to cancel the card class, um, the card kit, and I've replaced it with the tag kit. Um, and I will, I will do, uh, I will schedule that card class event when that product becomes available again. But all of that information is at the beginning of the video too. I don't want to bore you with it again. Okay. All right, you guys, thank you so much. And, um, I will see you guys next Thursday. All right. Bye-bye.